Textures, let's talk about them. Vector art and text can have such a clinical mathematical feel. It's so perfect. Uh, but what about those times when you want to give a more organic feel to your vector graphics? I've been subtly tweaking my methods over the years to try to employ natural looking textures that can animate without using keyframes or multiple image textures, like this stamp method I'll teach you today. It uses one large texture image and that's it. Effects and expressions do all the heavy lifting, giving the roughening effect a stop motion look. And best of all, once the template is built, you can swap text for any image and it still works great. Let's see how to make it. Got After Effects open, and I'm going to start by creating a new composition here. I want it to be 1080. It's all set here. I've already done this. Change the name to Text Texture. Uh, 24 frames per second, and I'm keeping mine at 10 seconds long. You can make it as long as you want. Doesn't matter. Okay. And now I'm going to go ahead and import a paper texture. Conveniently, I have this one from another tutorial I did about generating paper textures in Blender, uh, which is a free software. And it's a great tutorial if uh, you need to generate stuff on the fly. makes great textures. Uh, so I'm going to drag and drop this one into my composition here. And I have a square. It's actually pretty perfect for this. Um, but before I get started, I'm going to go ahead and scale it up here about 200 percent I'm going to be um, adding some expressions that make it zoom around pretty wildly so I want to make sure it's got full coverage in this uh, composition now I'm going to add an effect color correction levels and you don't always need to do this but here it's a very faint texture so what I want to do is boost the darks Boost the lights, just get a little bit better contrast here. Uh, eventually, I'm going to be just utilizing the texture. You're not going to really see the paper at all. Uh, but for now, that looks pretty good. So to start here, I'm going to go to the position, Alt, left click, the stopwatch. Uh, that brings up the expression panel, and I'm going to add an expression, the wiggle expression. Uh, what I want to do is have the time be 24 so it changes once every frame because the frame rate is 24 frames per second. And then for the amplitude, I'm going to go about 700, which is huge. And you're going to see here, once I do that, when I press play, all over the place. It's pretty cool, not super useful as it is, but we will make it useful. Now I'm going to do the same thing, Alt, left click the rotation parameter, open up the expression panel and do the same. Wiggle, this time 24 for the time, so once every frame, and 360 for the amplitude, so it has the opportunity to have a full rotation, up to a full rotation at any given frame. And we'll see how wild this is now. Cool, that's great. But it moves a little too quick for my liking right now. So what I want to do is go back into each of these and add a posterized time expression. And what this is going to do is lock the animation to a frame rate, a specific frame rate. So for the posterized time expression, you want to make sure you type out posterized time, capital T, or else it will not work. And then parentheses after, uh, so you can set your frame rate. Here I'm going to do eight frames per second. And that line with a semicolon, and drop the other expression down below. And I'll copy paste this because I'll use it again. Uh, now you'll be able to see that the position only changes. Um, at a frame rate of 8 frames per second, but in the general context of the 24 frame per second frame rate. So it's nice and slow, choppy, exactly what I'm going for. And we'll do the same thing for the rotation. Now 
now it gives a nice very choppy animated look uh, essentially this is like if you're familiar with hand animation you know like animating on twos so it just gives it a choppy look and it's really cool and using only one image uh, this is pretty convenient to just apply procedural animation and textures to vector stuff roughen it up a little bit so now that that's there what I'm gonna do is select my paper layer go up to effects keying and add an extract effect and what this is gonna do is it's gonna remove the general paper texture and just leave these little dark spots grab the white section move it over and it gets rid of all the areas that are light until eventually you're left with this which is exactly what we want it's kind of like the indentations in the paper and this is just basically generating an alpha mask on this layer uh, which we can then use in our texture so if I play this now you'll see these spots are just kind of all dancing around like it's snowing at this point might be a good time to save my file so I'm gonna call this stamp effect save and now I can add my text so generating another layer here I'm gonna appropriately just write texture and I wanted it really big I've already done this so everything's kind of set up the way I want it to but you can use any font doesn't matter I would recommend something that's very bold um, not a lot of thin lines this way you really get, get the texture inside but it doesn't matter and now I'm gonna change this to black and go down to this little checkerboard here so I can remove the background and it's just the texture and now already you can see probably where we're going here this kinda goes over it so I can select that texture layer the um, text layer now and uh, if you don't see these panels here uh, you can toggle between switches and modes down the bottom left here um, we want to be able to see a track mat section uh, so toggle over until you get it and under track map for my text layer I'm going to select alpha inverted mat and paper one is my file above the layer above and all that's gonna do is take the alpha from this layer and use it to subtract from my text layer and so you can see here you can just see right through it generates this texture that is now constantly moving through my text and you know the last thing to do to add a little bit of texture to this lettering so I'm going to go up to effects distort turbulent displace another one of my favorite effects here um, and just mess with it until I get a nice rough edge around the sides so I'm probably gonna go smaller amount about 18 size um, uh, say about eight complexity I'm gonna drag that up a bit so now you can see this really rough edge kinda looks like a stamp really cool exactly what I'm looking for and now to animate this section I can also use an expression it's just the time expression so I'm gonna type time asterisk which would be multiplied and I'm gonna multiply the time of the composition by 800 that will create the value of the evolution which basically works on um, a rotation so 360 degrees and that you want a really high value because you want it to appear as though the texture 
around the edges changes every frame. So now I can actually go ahead and posterize that the same as I did to the other expressions. Posterize time. Eight frames per second. And there we go. That looks really cool. And you can layer this over anything at this point. I'm going to make the text white again. Unclick this box here. Double check. Everything looks OK. Cool. So everything looks all right. I'm going to go to Composition, Add to Adobe Media Encoder queue. Adobe Media Encoder to encode it. I can use the H.264 codec. H264, let's go into the right section here, well there it is, hope you liked it, uh, and don't forget to like and subscribe at the bottom, uh, I got a ton of these coming so don't miss any.